What's up, everyone? James Murphy here from mCoding, back again to tell you about another new feature in Python 3.9. Today, we're going to be talking about a simple but very convenient addition to the standard library. Today, we're talking about the new remove prefix and remove suffix methods for strings, bytes, and byte arrays. So let's get into the examples. Suppose that we have a list of files. And I'm going to go ahead and type annotate this using the new Python 3.9 syntax. Uh, suppose that we have, say, paint.exe. We're going to have some executables. Um, you know, word.exe. Might as well throw in virus.exe while we're at it. And let's do something that doesn't end in exe. Let's do something you know that shouldn't be modified. Um, by whatever we're doing. Uh, let's just start by printing out these files. So there they are. Um, and we would like to strip off that .exe from the things that have it. Well, in Python 3.9, it's super simple. Uh, let's just say files is x dot remove suffix. And then we give it the suffix that we want to remove, .exe or x in files. Let's print it again. And as you can see, paint, word, and virus all got the .exe removed, uh, but the not modified example stayed as it was. Now, you might think that it should just crash um, on the not modified example, but the community just decided that it would be simpler to just have it do nothing if um, the string that you're trying to remove the suffix from doesn't have the suffix. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, this doesn't just work with strings. It also works with a, a few other string-like objects. So I'll just give you one more example uh, about how you would use this with, say, a, a bytes object. So suppose we're getting a, you know, a, a response from some kind of HTTP request or something like that, and then we get some data. Well, I can go ahead and Let's remove the prefix because we know that our response is always going to start with this response colon space. And let's go ahead and run that. Oh, uh, looks like I made a small mistake here. Um, it's good to point out that because the um, thing that I'm trying to remove here is a string, uh, that needs to be the same as the thing that I'm removing it from, which in this case was bytes. So um, it's actually a good thing that it crashes here because it catches mistakes like that. So what I needed to do was remove the bytes prefix here. Now when I run it, we see that we just get the data. Now, you may be thinking, hey, I kind of remember something already in the standard library that removes things from the beginning or the end of a string. And those things are called lstrip and rstrip. So rstrip, the r being for right side, removing from the end, and lstrip, removing from the left side. Um, those are actually not what we want. And this was a pretty common error for a, begin a beginner Python programmer to make, is to try to use, say, rstrip to remove a suffix. So let's see what happens if um, we make our files instead, uh, or actually let's just use a new variable, um, or comment this one out. Let's say that instead of using the remove suffix thing, we're going to do x dot r strip, because that kind of sounds like it's, it's the right thing. So we want to r strip dot exe from the end of it, the end of each uh, element. And then let's go ahead and print the files. OK, so what do we get? Looking at that last line, we see paint. That looks good. Word, that looks good. Virus, that looks good. But then the not modified example is missing an E now. What happened? Well, the way that rstrip works is it actually tries to remove any of those characters from the end. They don't have to be in that order. So because example ended in an E, that E was removed. So you can see here that this is extra dangerous because 
it even does the right thing sometimes. And if you weren't expecting it, maybe you only had one test case or most of your data um, was of the right format, then you may not even notice it for a while. And then you can get some really nasty bugs because of that. So the next thing that I want to go into is how might you actually implement this? OK, so let's start getting into the implementation of how I might implement uh, the remove prefix operation. So step, step number one is going to be writing tests, because I know that there are a lot of simple mistakes that could be made in a function like this. So I'm going to write my tests before I ever write any part of the function. So to save you the time uh, of watching me type these out, I've just pasted them here. Uh, but we're going to go over them uh, before we write any of the actual code for the test or for the uh, implementation. So first off, uh, this first test is just your basic functionality. ABC test, if I try to remove ABC from uh, as a prefix, I just get test. If I try to remove DEF, that's not at the beginning of the string. I should get the string back. If I try to remove nothing, uh, I should also get the string back. And if I try to remove something from nothing or nothing from nothing, I also have um, an idea what I want those answers to be. This next block of code is literally just copy pasted, but I've changed everything to bytes um, instead of um, strings. And similarly, this block of code, again, it's just copy pasted, but I changed everything to byte arrays. Finally, with byte arrays, I want to make sure that any object that I get back uh, is actually a copy. I don't want to accidentally uh, return the original object back when I'm expecting to get a copy back. So in this case, I'm just saying make a byte array x and then try to remove um, this prefix from it. And in that case, I want to get something back which is equal to the original because I removed nothing. That's always going to be a, a prefix. Um, but I don't want it to be literally the same object. So the way that I check that they're different objects is y is not x. OK, so now that we have all of our tests, let's go ahead and start writing the function. So let's define uh, remove prefix. So I know that I want it to take a string s and a prefix. And I actually want to uh, be type safe about this. So let me go ahead and define a new type variable, t. And I have to import this from typing. I just use a keyboard shortcut to do that. And t will be either string, bytes, or byte array. So now I can be a little bit more specific um, about the signature here. So I want both s and the prefix to have the same type, which can be either string, bytes, or byte array. And then I'm going to return something of that type. So how does the function go? Well, first, I'll check to see if the string starts with the prefix. So if s uh, starts with, there's already a built-in method for that, the prefix, then I'm going to use a slice starting at, say, the, the length of the prefix and going until the end. And then I want to return that. Otherwise, we're in the case that I tried to remove something that's not there. So I just want to get the original back. But not exactly the original. I don't want to just return s. I want to actually return a copy. So let's see if that uh, passes all of my tests. Go ahead and run it. And we see that it does pass. Now, let's see what happens if 
I didn't have this um, copy there. If I run my tests again, we actually see it still passes. My, my tests weren't as thorough as I would have liked, uh, but maybe with a better example. Um, so this second case would have gone into, if I did this with byte array, something that the prefix wasn't there. So if I tried to remove ABC from one, two, three, I should get something which is equal but not identical to the original object. So now this test is actually going to fail. Uh, but if I put this copy back in, then it works. So what about the remove suffix operation? This time, let's forget about the tests and just write the function. Remove suffix. Again, I'm going to take a string and a suffix of the same type t and return a type t. It's going to be similar. If s this time ends with the suffix, then we'll return going from the beginning to negative the length of the suffix. So you might be familiar uh, with this syntax. If you put in a negative number for that uh, second thing in the slice, it actually counts from the back of the list. So I'm going to cut off the length of the suffix number of characters from the string. But actually, as I'm reading this, uh, I've noticed a, a slight bug in this already. Uh, which is that this negative syntax only works uh, for negative numbers. And uh, we've already looked at the case where the suffix could be the empty string. And in that case, what this would do is actually just give me uh, the empty string back. So I don't want that. I want to check if the suffix uh, is not empty. So I'll just say if suffix and the suffix uh, is at the end of the string. Then I'll return this. And then otherwise, I will return a copy of my s. So there you have it. Uh, that's how I would implement these remove prefix and remove suffix operators, say, in Python 3.9. Hey, thanks again for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, also, I'm actually offering live online courses in Python. So if you'd be interested in learning Python from me, then go ahead and drop your contact information at the link in the description, and I'll let you know when these courses become available.